Hiya guys, welcome back to Creative Tap. Now today we're going to be jumping into After Effects to create a really cool underwater animated scene. We're going to be covering a few different keyframe techniques, linear, easy ease keyframes, hold keyframes, animating along the path, some other stuff as well. So hopefully you'll pick up a few new tips and tricks and you'll have a really cool animation to finish off the tutorial with. So let's do it and let's dive on in. When I say dive on in, no pun intended because it's underwater. Actually, pun intended, definitely. Okay, so let's dive on into starting to create this scene and animate it and pull it all together. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've got After Effects open. I'm going to go to File and down to Import and Import File. Now, when I get my dialog window, all I need to do from here is I need to locate where my Illustrator file is. Here it is, Underwater Scene. And where it says Import As, I just need to change that to Composition. And then click Import. If I imported it as footage, it would be flattened and I wouldn't have access to individual layers. So I've imported it as a composition. Here it is on the left. Give it a nice double click. And we have access to all of the layers. So I'm going to turn my resolution down to a third just for now, um, just so it previews in a lot quicker. So I've got, as I disable them individually, I've got reefs, these reefs on the left. I've got orange reef, and you can see, you can disable them all yourself, and that this is what we've got to work with. Now, first of all, we're going to create hold keyframes. With hold keyframes, you don't see the change between each individual keyframe, and I'll illustrate what that means. We've got mine lights, and we've got mine, okay? So if I solo these two, and I'm just going to turn my background black, there you go. What we want to do is we want to have these lights flash in on and off like so. So we need to animate the opacity. So with my mine lights selected, I'm going to hit T on the keyboard, and that'll show my opacity. Good way to remember it is opacity is kind of like the transparency as well, so T transparency. So I'm going to set a keyframe at zero seconds for 100, and I'm going to come forward about 15 frames. Now before I do that, I'm noticing that my composition is 30 seconds long. Yours may be one second, it may be five seconds. So what we can do is go to composition and composition settings, and I'm going to change the duration to just eight seconds long. I don't need any more than that. And I'm also going to change the frame rate to 25 frames per second. And then I'm going to click OK. So what I've got now is I've got 25 frames per second, and I've only got eight seconds to work with because we don't need any more. So next thing, I want to come forward about 15 frames, and I want to turn this all the way down to zero. So the page down key above my arrow keys on the keyboard, you'll notice when I hit page down, I'm going forward frame by frame. And you can see on the left where the frames are changing, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way to 15 frames. Okay, so I can scrub across. There you go, I'm at 15. I'm going to now change my opacity to zero, and I can do that by scroll, clicking and dragging down to zero, or I can just click the number and hit zero on the keyboard and hit enter. So I've now got a keyframe for 100 at zero seconds, and at 15 frames in, I've now got 0% opacity. So if I come forward another 15 frames, and we can do that by counting on the keyboard as we hit page down, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm now going to go back up to 100, okay? And I've got another keyframe. I'm going to go forward another 15 frames, so that'll take me to one second and 20 frames, like so. And I'm going to take it all the way back down to zero again. Click in there, zero on the keyboard, hit enter. And I want to keep this going. So a nice quick way of doing it is by clicking and dragging to select all of these keyframes, hitting Control or Command and C, on the keyboard, that'll copy it. I'm going to come forward another 15 frames. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And I'm now going to do Control or Command on a Mac, V. And what that'll do is that'll paste all my keyframes again. So I'm going to go to the end, come forward 15 frames, which will be, looking over here, it'll be 4 seconds and 20 frames. So come forward to that. Control V again. I'm going to do the same thing so another 15 frames would be, that will take me to 7 seconds and 5 frames. 
and I'm just going to control V again or command V on a Mac. So what we've got so far, let's give this a little playthrough. We've got these lights, if you look by here, these mine lights are actually fading on and then off. Now I don't want to see the fade, I want it to blink. So in order to suddenly change and not to see the change in between each keyframe, what I need to do is I need to select them, select them all and right click and on a Mac this would be command and click. So I'll just right click and you've got something here called toggle hold keyframes. So hold keyframes do exactly this. Now when we play through it just blinks between each value. It doesn't animate and fade down like it was earlier. It purely blinks between them. And you'll notice that our little diamond keyframes have turned into a diamond with a sort of square end. These are called hold keyframes, okay? So we've got that working. The next thing I wanna do for this scene is I wanna animate the position of my submarine. I want it to move from the left to the right. In order to do so, I need to select submarine and to animate the position, hit your P on the keyboard. So P for position. I'm just gonna set a keyframe by hitting a stopwatch. I'm gonna move forward to eight seconds and I'm simply, there's two things I can do. I can either click and drag the layer across and that'll set my other keyframe by here or I can simply go to this value here, 960, and just click and drag so it moves across the screen. That way there's no chance it's gonna move up and down slightly. So these are linear keyframes. It goes from point A to point B, okay? So if I now play it through, you'll see we've got this blinking mine by here and we've got this um, submarine moving across. So that's great. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna animate this treasure chest opening. So let's go down to our treasure chest. We've got chest lid, which is a bit we want to animate. We've got the bottom of the chest and then we've got these coins behind, okay? So I'm gonna solo these three layers because that's all we're concerned about. Now this chest lid, I want this to be, this needs to rotate around the corner by here so it rotates open, okay? We can't, we could position it opening, but that just looks, that doesn't look right. So we need to hit R on our keyboard. And if we do start playing around with the rotation by clicking and dragging, you can see it's rotating around this point in the center and that's, that's not ideal. What we actually need to do is we need to move this anchor point to the corner. So I'm just gonna go and zero out my rotation. This needs to move to the corner so it rotates around that point. So up the top, you've got something called your anchor point tool next to the camera. If you select that, I can now click and drag this anchor point so we are going to rotate around this corner. Make sure you come back to your selection tool. And now when I play around with the rotation property, you can see it animates around that point. So again, if my anchor point was in the center and we play around with the rotation, it animates around, around that little pin. Okay, so let's just undo that. Now, what I wanna do is I'll set a keyframe for my rotation at zero at the beginning. And then by the time we get to about two and a half seconds, I reckon, I want this to have rotated open. So I'm just gonna move forward in, the in time and I'm just gonna play around with this value just so it rotates open to about there and reveals the treasure inside. So, so far, we've got linear keyframes. At point A, it's zero. At point B by here, it's 31 degrees in the rotation. So let's play that through. Looking at it, it looks very rigid. It comes to a sudden stop. By, by here, it comes to a sudden stop. We want that to come to a slow, gradual stop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click this keyframe, come to keyframe assistant. On a Mac, that will be a command click. But I'm gonna come to keyframe assistant and you've got easy ease, easy ease in, easy ease out. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click easy ease. And what you'll notice now, it'll be subtle, but when we come to this keyframe, when it comes to a stop, it should come to a slower stop. So let's have a play through. You'll see that was a little bit more of a gradual stop. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the keyframes closer together. What will happen now is the animation won't start until we come to this first keyframe. And because they're closer together, it'll happen a lot faster. And I think it'll show the smoothness of this easy ease keyframe a lot better. So let's give it a play. And yeah, that, that was, that was a, it came to a smooth end. We can make this smoother by going into the graph editor, but I'm not going to do that in this tutorial because I just want you to understand easy ease keyframes. So if I disable all these now, what we've got so far is we've got this little submarine going left to right. 
I think that was a bit fast for the, I think it was a bit fast opening. So I'm just gonna move the second keyframe for the chest just a little bit further in time to make that a little touch slower. So we've got the blink in mine, we've got this and it comes to a gradual stop there, that's quite nice. And we've got this animating. So the only things we've got left to animate is that shark and we've got those little fish. Now, what I wanna do first of all, and we've got these reefs. What I wanna do is I wanna animate these um, little fish along a path, okay? So I've just noticed actually with my mouse, where I've got the mouse, I've got that little square in the corner and that's because I'm still on the anchor point tool. So just make sure you come back to the selection tool. Right, okay. With these little fish, I want them to animate along a path. I wanna draw out a path in here that I want them to, uh, to move across because if I animate the position left to right, they're going in a line and that doesn't look right. So with fish number one selected, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this pen tool up here, okay? And let me just solo out this fish. So it's this one, right, okay, cool. I'm gonna get my pen tool, select it. And first of all, actually, I wanna make sure that my anchor point is on that fish. So I'm gonna move, first of all, my anchor point to the middle of that fish, okay? That's your first step. Then you need to get your pen tool. And with this fish layer selected, I'm just gonna draw by clicking once, and then I'm gonna click and hold down my click to make this nice little curve, okay? And then I'm gonna click again over here and hold it down and just draw out and pull to make this curve. And finally, click one more time and hold down my click just to kind of draw out another little curve, okay? Now that's a little bit overdone and you can come back and you can kind of affect this curve just by clicking these points and make it a little less kind of, um, I don't know what the word is, a little less curvy. <laughs> But what we've got now is we've actually drawn a mask on this layer. So if I go to my fish layer by here, if I hit the letter M on a keyboard, it'll show that I've got a mask on here and that's what I've just drawn. What we wanna do is we wanna scroll this down and I wanna click mask path. And if I click control C, what it's done is it's copied, or command C on a Mac, it's copied that little path to my clipboard, okay? If I now, with this layer selected, hit P and click position, you've got to make sure you click position. If I now go Control V, what it'll do is it's given me positional keyframes based upon this path. I've copied the mask path here across to the position, okay? So let's have a look and play and see what happens. You'll see now that this fish is following is following that path which I've drawn out. So what we can do is now hit M on the fish again. I'm gonna click the mask and I'm gonna delete it because we don't need the mask. So what we've got now is hitting P just to see the keyframes. It's generated these keyframes for us, okay? That's great. I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna highlight fish number two, click it. I wanna make sure my anchor point is in the center and I'm gonna get my pen tool I'm gonna draw now, click once, click and hold, just to drag out that curve, click and hold, and I'm gonna click and hold just to curve it a little bit more. Now on fish two layer, if you hit M on the keyboard, you've got mask path, okay? I wanna click mask path, control or command C, and now I'm gonna hit P to get the position up, click position, control or command V, and it'll copy these keyframes, okay? So now this fish is going along the path which I've drawn, which is great. I'm then gonna come onto the fish layer and hit M and click the mask and I'm gonna delete it because we don't want the mask on there. Okay, so if I hit P now, what I can do is I can select all of these keyframes and then hold in Alt on the keyboard or the Option button on Mac holding Alt, click and drag this last keyframe. And what you'll notice as I do that, select them all, Alt on the keyboard and click and drag the last one. It'll push the keyframes either closer together so it happens really fast, or if you Alt click and spread them out like so, let's make it as long as the composition, you'll see that it'll take a lot longer to go. It's basically making the animation longer. So I'm gonna have mine for about I think five seconds is good. I'm gonna do that on the first layer of the fish that I did. So P, click and drag, 
and I didn't select them because they didn't go blue. So click and drag, hold alt, and just make sure that they that you stretch it out so it lasts a bit longer. So now when I unsolo this, what we've got going on so far is we've got the fish kind of moving up and down. We've drawn a path for them to follow. We've got this little treasure chest opening and it uses an easy ease keyframe. We're using hold keyframes with this and we've basically got just linear keyframes for our submarine, okay? Because that lasts for the whole duration. So I've gone ahead and I've animated two of the other fish. Now the only things left to animate is the shark and I want to animate those little coral reefs flowing in the, in, I was going to say in the wind, but in the water. Okay, so for the shark, I'm literally going to do the same as I did for the submarine. I want him moving from the right hand side of the screen over here. Um, so I pulled him off to the right. And I want him moving very just slowly, okay? So if I hit P on the shark layer, I've dragged him off to the right by here. And he's going to start over there. Position keyframe, so hit the stopwatch. Come to about five seconds, because that's where I think I'm going to end this animation. And I'm literally just going to click and drag him in to frame by about here. So he's just going to be kind of moving very slowly, like so, okay? So that's basically what I've got for the shark. And you can see these fish fish are moving kind of on a path, but this shark, I thought he's going to be moving so slow, I don't, I don't need to bother with that. Cool, so finally what we need to do is we need to animate these corals sort of flowing in the water. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm actually going to use an effect. Now I've got orange reefs, and I've got, no, I've got reefs, and I've got orange reef. The orange reef looks like quite a rigid reef to me, and I didn't want to animate them all, okay, flowing. I wanted that one to look like quite a rigid one, just just to add some sort of um, a little bit of difference in there. So what I'm going to do, with my reefs selected, I'm going to get my effects and presets window up. So effects and presets, and there you go, I've got it on the left, on the right, sorry. So with the reefs layer selected, I want to search for an effect called turbulent displace so turbulent displace here it is and now i'm going to click and drag this onto my layer okay just make sure you drag it onto the right one and what you should notice is on the right you should pop up did i drag it on there you go i've now got turbulent displace on here and you can see if i disable this you can see that that's what it's doing to it now having done this before i'm going to turn my amount down to 30, you don't need to keyframe that, and I'm going to turn the size down to 40, okay? So again, I've just got this little displacement on there. What I want to actually animate is the evolution. So at zero seconds, if I click the stopwatch of evolution, I'm going to come forward to five seconds, and I'm going to click and drag this value by here to just animate how these are wobbling under the water. And I think I'll go to like round about here. Okay, now you can't see the keyframes on here, but if you hit U on your keyboard with the layer selected, you'll actually see whatever keyframes are in there. So now if I pull this out point, because I don't want to render it in the whole eight seconds, if I just pull this out point to here, I'm now going to play through and we'll see what we've got. And this is our final animation. So we've got these kind of flowing in the water. We've got these fish animating along a path. We've used the anchor point and easy ease keyframes with this chest. We've used toggle keyframes here, linear keyframes on the shark and the submarine. And we've got a nice little underwater scene. So that task was to kind of get you using different kinds of keyframes for different situations. And we even keyframed an effect here rather than the position, scale, rotation, and opacity, which we've only previously touched upon. So I really hope that helped you guys, and cheers for tuning in, and I'll see you in future video tutorials.